All right, uh, here we are. We're beginning unit number two. If we were to click on our chemistry tab on the top left corner there, make sure we're in the chemistry book. And there's unit one. We've already completed that. And here we are. We're going to start with atoms and elements. You can take a look here and see there's 2.1 all the way through 2.5. So we have five chapters we're going to cover, starting with parts of an atom. Go ahead and click on that. And we're going to jump right into our explore, okay? So the main question we're trying to answer there is in green. How can the subatomic parts of an atom be used to identify it? Go ahead and write that down. Uh, today is Monday, 10, 9, 23. And the essential question, how can the subatomic parts of an atom be used to identify it? Pause the video for a second, and I really suggest you write down what you know. Just kind of brainstorm and think about what you know. What are the subatomic uh, particles we're talking about, and can they be used to identify the atom? Tell me what you know. Okay, so I hope that you paused the video like I asked and wrote down what you knew. Um, that's always a good start as you begin something. So Roman numeral one, if we take a look at the, uh, the text on the left, we see that they're going to talk about protons, neutrons, and electrons. Did you mention that when you wrote down what you knew? Uh, is there any other sections in here? Let's scroll down. You can see some homework questions. And then we have a section called identifying atoms. Okay, so it looks like that section there may be uh, answering that main question up there, right? The main question, of course, was can we uh, use subatomic parts to identify it? I already kind of wrote these notes out, so uh, hopefully you started copying these. Um, my video uh, had a glitch, and so I'd already written down some of those notes before the recording stopped, and I had to restart it. Protons, neutrons, and electrons. I've drawn here a circle, and uh, on the right-hand side here, you can see that I've drawn in black uh, the protons, Protons are positively charged subatomic particles. And in blue, I've drawn out the neutrons. Neutrons, of course, have no charge. That's why uh, they have the word neutron. It means neutral. You'll find only those two subatomic particles in the nucleus. Outside of the nucleus, you'll see uh, the electrons. And the electrons... Um, We've got various models for how electrons uh, are spaced around the nucleus uh, from simple uh, orbital type of diagrams, which are useful, uh, to more elaborate electron cloud kind of probability clouds. Um, and we'll go into depth in that a little bit later. But right now, go ahead and just draw the electrons on the outside. You can see I have them in red. Electrons occupy regions outside the nucleus. They have a negative charge. So protons are positive, electrons are negative, and neutrons are neutral. Letter A. All atoms contain at least one proton. Hydrogen is an exception when it is stable. So starting on the periodic table, if we were to take a look at a periodic table, there we go. You can see that hydrogen occupies the first spot, top left corner, and you read the periodic table just like you read a book, left to right. So hydrogen, top left, helium, top right. You go down to the second line, or what we call the second period, and you've got lithium and beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. And you just keep on going back and forth reading that. You can see that there's a total of seven periods. If you go down on the left-hand side, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. And we'll go into detail on how to read the periodic table at a different time. But um, that's just to show you that hydrogen is in that first spot. And you would expect it to have... Um, at least one proton. 
you would expect every other element on here to have at least one. Helium has two, lithium has three, beryllium has four. The atomic number uh, in the top left corner of each of these little boxes, for example, if you click on lithium, you can see it says number three in the top left corner. That is the atomic number. It tells you how many protons that atom has. Uh, hydrogen is the only one that uh, is an exception to this rule. It can have an isotope form without a proton. Okay, And as you can see here under A, uh, every atom also has at least one neutron. Now here's something that's interesting. Protons and neutrons have the same mass. We define that as their atomic mass unit. You simply add the number of protons and the number of neutrons to uh, arrive at the atomic mass unit. Okay, as I got written down there. Let's go back to our text here. Okay. Um, All right, so we've talked about um, masses and we've talked about protons and neutrons having the same mass. Uh, electrons are uh, very, very small. In fact, if you take a look down here, we say that the mass of an electron is only 1 1836, 1 1,836th one, one the mass of either a proton or a neutron. Very, very small mass, quite negligible. When we're calculating, calculating the atomic mass units, we usually don't even consider the electrons uh, when we're calculating that, okay? Um, this, though, is of importance, and you should also pay attention to here, number B, letter B here. The magnitude of the negative charge of an electron is equal to the amount of positive charge of a proton. So if you're going to have a neutral atom, if let's just say that you have a hydrogen, and you have one proton, uh, which is a positive charge, to make that a stable atom, you need to have one negative charge. A positive one plus a negative one cancels out, equals zero. And that's what we call a stable atom. If you take a look at helium, let me just click on helium over here, you can see in the top left corner, it says uh, that it has two protons. To make that a stable, atom of helium, you would need to have two electrons, two negatives, the electrons, plus two positives, the protons, they would cancel each other out and you'd have a stable element of helium, okay? So that's kind of what this is saying over here on the right-hand side. The magnitude of the negative charge of an electron is equal to the amount of positive charge of a proton, okay? That's for stable, um, uh, atoms. You can have unstable atoms, and usually what happens uh, is you have varying numbers of electrons. If you have more electrons than protons, you're going to have a negatively charged ion. If you have fewer electrons than protons, you're going to have a positively charged ion. So, uh, that's something that you want to keep in mind because that's going to be a big part of this chapter here. All right. So let's see here. Uh, I think that uh, brings us kind of up to, um, up to speed. And we've talked about uh, electron clouds. Um, we've talked about uh, the same number of electrons and protons creating a neutral uh, Adam. So let's take a look here at this paragraph. However, under certain conditions, an atom and an element will gain or lose electrons. In this case, the charge in the atom becomes unbalanced and the particle has a net charge. So maybe we should start our writing here, okay? The atom is stable. We'll just say that. If it has... equal numbers of protons and electrons, uh, protons 
and neutrons. Um, if the number of neutrons changes, not the number of protons, okay? The number of protons is always the identity of the element. Uh, if you're hydrogen, you always have one proton. If you're helium, you always have two helium, uh, two protons. So the number of protons is what's going to tell you what kind of atom you're looking at. It never, never changes. But the number of neutrons can change. Uh, then in this case, then you form isotopes. Isotopes are different versions of the same element. You can have carbon-12, you can have carbon-14. Both of them have the same number of protons. Uh, the difference is in the number of neutrons, okay? So um, if the number of neutrons changes, then you form isotopes. And if the atom is not neutral, we're talking about charge here, that means you have more or fewer electrons compared to protons. So if you have, say, um, carbon and you have carbon um, has uh, 12 protons, but it has and it has 12 neutrons, then this is what we call neutral. But if you have carbon has 12 protons, um, and I should have said here, this, this um, neutral implies, I should have written that down, at 12 electrons, if it's neutral, okay? Because electrons are negative, 12, so you have a positive 12 plus a negative 12 equals zero, neutral. So, but what if you have 12 uh, protons and atomic number 12 again, carbon, but you have this time, um, you have 14 electrons then what you basically have is you have uh, 12, positive 12, plus a negative 14. So you have a net charge of 2. So in this case, you have a carbon negative 2. This is a ion, okay, a negatively charged ion. Um, in fact, this is an anion. This is an anion. And this is something we'll get to a little bit later, but you really need to understand at least the idea that you can have different charges. Or what if you have this? You have carbon again, and you have um, carbon-12. <laughs> We're just going to say that that's the number of protons in there. Um, and and that, actually, I'm doing this kind of wrong. Um, we should actually, because carbon has actually six here, so this should have been six, and this should have been six, and that should have canceled out. And now we're going to say that you have still carbon six, but that's the number of protons. But this time we're going to say that you have, and let's change, this was um, uh, six, this was eight electrons. So you had six protons, plus you had 
eight electrons, and that gave you a negative two. I'm sorry about that. So what if you had carbon six again? And why am I saying this? I guess I should go back here and take a look at the periodic table. See here, I'm going to click on carbon. Carbon actually has six protons. So I was giving you the atomic mass units, and that was a mistake on my part. So carbon has six. That's why I'm writing six on the top. And so here down here, carbon again has six. It always will have six protons. But what if it has this time um, four electrons? Then in this case, you would have um, a positive six, those are your protons, plus a negative four neutrons, and you would have a net charge that was two positive. Net positive charge. And we would call this a, um, a cation. We call it a cation. And we'd say that carbon has a positive two charge. I think maybe I should write that as carbon is a C2 plus. It has a carbon with a two uh, positive charge. So what makes an ion? It means that you have, you're not neutral. You don't have the same number of electrons as protons. You either have an excess positive charge or you have an excess negative charge. What causes that excess? It's the number of electrons, okay? So that's the important thing to remember there, okay? All right, um, is there anything else? Okay, identifying atoms. Uh, so I trust that you've read this whole Explorer one already and you're ready for these notes. So identifying atoms, um, the atoms of each element differ from one another. These differences account for the various properties. That's right, gold is different than silver. Oxygen is different than hydrogen, right? Uh, what makes these different? It's the number of protons. Um, in fact, it's highlighted here. The number, the primary detail that identifies the atoms of a specific element is the number of protons in its nucleus. All right, so um, let's see here. I'm looking at that. I think we probably want to uh, make that point. A, B, this will be letter C here, okay? Letter C. The number of protons is what determines the identity of the atom, okay? And when we take a look over here, we're looking, if we go to, um, let's clear the screen and let's move this over here. So here's hydrogen. Hydrogen has one proton. Hydrogen, is always, it's always going to be hydrogen if you have only one proton. If you take a look at beryllium. There we go, beryllium. It has an atomic number of four. That means it has four protons. It'll always be beryllium if it has four protons. If it becomes five protons, then we're going to be talking about... Um, boron here, right? Number five. If it has three protons, it's going to be lithium, okay? What can change, though, is the number of neutrons. That's going to create your different isotopes, and it can have different numbers of electrons, and that's going to create your different ions, your charged particles. So you could have lithium as a cation, a positively charged ion, you could have lithium as a anion, a negatively charged ion, basically just the atom, but with more or fewer electrons, therefore giving it a positive or negative charge. It's a lot to learn here, for sure. 
And um, so here you go. You got a picture of your periodic table. You can see that it's color coded here uh, on the left hand side. You have um, over here this grouping and this grouping here are your representative elements. Uh, they also will be called other things besides this. You have your Nobel or noble gases are right here, column 18. Your transition metals all in pink down here. These are your transition metals. And you can see then you've got your lanthanides in green. So your lanthanides. And then you have your actinides, which are over here. And these guys are down here. So we group uh, these elements, these atoms, uh, based on their, um, their particular physical properties and characteristics. All right. So, um, but at this point, simply getting to know the idea that they uh, all differ by the number of protons and that you have a, a, an understanding of how ions are formed and how um, isotopes are formed is probably the biggest thing for you, okay? So let's go and clear our screen and let's see here. All right, so let's go ahead and finish this up here with just um, this, okay? D. Isotopes of an element have the same number of protons but different numbers of neutrons. Okay. Letter E, um, stable atoms, no charge. That means they have equal numbers of protons and neutrons, or I'm sorry, electrons. Therefore, the charges cancel out. Stable. Versus ions, they carry a positive or negative charge. The protons are always the same. But the number of electrons vary. If you have fewer electrons than protons, then you're going to have a positive charge. You'll be a cation. If fewer electrons than protons, you're going to be positive. And we're going to call you a cation. If you have more electrons than protons, then you're going to be negative.